Are you ready to increase your retention and revenue and convert website traffic to clients? Then you're ready for Maya. Maya is a marketing and client recruitment software. Maya creates better business relationships by pairing the right clients with the right beauty professionals. How do we do it? The matchmaker. Your brand will have its own unique matchmaking survey. By pairing people based on their skill set, budget, personality, and lifestyle preferences, Maya creates lasting relationships that keep both sides coming back for more. You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. Pair the right clients with the right beauty pros the first time. Visit joinmaya.com to get started. Thank you for joining me. This is Katie Whitledge with the Beyond the Technique podcast. Today, we're talking about creating a career path that lasts. If you have always wanted to create this amazing career path so that your incredible team members will stay the long haul, they don't have to think about going out on their own. They really could see themselves close to retirement with you and and enjoying those perks of being loyal to your company, then today's episode is for you. We have a first-time guest and award-winning multi-location salon owner, future franchise owner, We'll learn all about that. Let me just share a bit about our guest today, Leah Hakim, who is joining us from New York. But let me just tell you, she has been a hairdresser for over 25 years. She went to cosmetology school in Los Angeles and built a full clientele in Orange County area of Southern California. She moved to New York in 1992 and continued to do hair in New York. In 2014, she decided to open her first blow dry bar and due to the overwhelming positive response she opened another and another and another I mean we're just gonna keep opening more and more you're gonna hear all about totally hot salons and hot lash and hot lounge I mean the whole thing is hot just like today's episode so without further ado help me welcome Leah Hakim welcome to be on the technique thank you thank you so much for having me I'm excited to be here well, I'm excited to finally get you on this podcast. You and I met through High Performance Salon Academy. You are a mentor, incredible on stage, so looked up to by everybody there, including myself. And so thank you for carving out this time to share your industry journey with us. That's actually where I want to start. What made you decide back in California that getting into hair was a path you wanted to take? Oh gosh, I get asked this question a lot. And my answer is always, I'm like, let me warn you about my answer. It's not exactly like, so uh, what you would expect, but it's the truth. So um, I actually left home and went to college and I was living in a dorm that was like a private dorm for our uh, school. And so I, my roommate went to the cosmetology program in the community college. And I just, loved like she would get ready for school and she had her white coat on and her cute kit and she just looked like she was having so much fun and I was like going dreading with the books and all of that and I just there was something about her energy and and her passion that I just you know my young age of whatever I was 18 I just wasn't feeling it and uh what I was doing you know so I thought I was going to be a lawyer and uh, I decided to sign up for cosmetology program without asking or telling my parents until after I did it. And yeah, much to their surprise. So I just went and I really loved it. Like immediately I, you know, I knew that I was in the right industry for me and I was like, oh, maybe I'll be a lawyer someday too. But you know, my path has gone completely different and um, I'm really happy with how it, how it turned out. But that is really what kind of caused me <laughs> to joy to start cosmetology. So not well, your usual answer. And, and it's so interesting that you built this incredible clientele and then, you know, you're fully built, you're successful, you're in Southern California where the weather is amazing. And then you decide, oh, I'm going to move completely across country to the East coast, not the yeah. same weather in New York. What brought you to the big apple? Okay. Another crazy answer. Um, (laughs) So I was, had my full clientele. I worked really hard to build that up at a time before there was the internet, social media, computers, cell phones. Like it was papering the net, the canvassing the neighborhood with, you know, wires. That's how we did it. And one of my 
clients, guests worked for United Airlines. And I used, she would come in and tell me all the stories of her fun trips and all of this stuff. And I was like, gosh, that sounds fun. Like, why can't I just do both? And so I applied to American Airlines and I got hired, but because I was, you know, didn't do my due diligence, I guess. I didn't realize I didn't have a choice in where I got based and I got based in New York. So I gifted my clientele to my friend and I was off to new, to the Big Apple and that's how I landed here. No yes. pun intended, huh? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. I landed in a city I had never been to before, actually, which is a fun fact. That is just, that takes courage and it just points to you being kind of adventurous. So where do you feel that came from? Gutsy, I guess. I don't know. You know, it's funny you bring that up because I look back through my life and it's like, I've made a lot of really gutsy decisions based on like, you know, I'll just do it without really looking too much into it. I, I was an exchange student in high school to Germany, but I was a Spanish student lived with a family that didn't speak English and I didn't speak German, go figure. Mm -hmm. Somehow I figured it out. You know, I decided to leave my small hometown and go to college and throw that to the wind and go to cosmetology school. Then I was like, oh, well, it sounds fun. Let me move to a city I've never been and be a flight attendant. And yeah, I just kind of was like, I another pun, just wing it a lot of times. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I just have like a, I don't know, an innate sense, like it'll work out somehow to work out. So, and it has, you know, I, I got my cosmetology license in New York and at the time flight attendants, we had a scale, B scale. We were really broke. We were eating leftover caviar off the plane because we had no money, but I was able to always, uh, you know, supplement my income with doing hair. So I started working at a small salon on the upper East side and just worked on my days off. And that's how I really stayed in the game, you know, in the, in the Cosmo world, cosmetology world, and was doing flight attendants hair and on layovers in the hotels. And I did my classmates during training. It was, you know, it was crazy. That was a time when we used to get weighed and measured and we had to cut, we all had to cut our hair a certain way. So they had like a grooming room at training and they would do these terrible highlights. It was in Texas and it was like terrible hair. So I'm in like, we're studying, but I'm doing highlights and boils and haircuts. I was like, I was doing everyone's hair. So we all looked the same. It was all my work. It was great. <laughs> but I earned, you know, I was able to, to afford a, a little better lifestyle in New York City at the time, just because I was able to supplement my income. So, you know, that cosmetology license has really come in handy for me throughout my life for sure. And part of this story almost feels like that came almost secondary for a season to your being a flight attendant. When did the shift come into play where you were like, I'm going to open my own business? Because that's a big responsibility that at the beginning, typically you have to be pretty present for. Yeah. So another moment of, oh, well, let's just see what happens. You know, I, uh, my daughter, so fast forward, I you know got married and had children and uh, my daughter was in her bat mitzvah year. Um, she's Jewish and, she, you know, you get a lot of invitations. Like they come, you have a bar bat mitzvah every weekend and we get all these invitations. And it was just when the dry bar had started, you know, that was just that whole phase had just started. And I kept, we would get the invitation. She had that real coarse, curly, thick hair. She doesn't want her mom blowing it out. You know, it was like, ah. So I said, uh, you know, as soon as we'd get the invitations, I would make an appointment at the, at the dry, it wasn't a dry bar, but it was a blowout, a blow dry bar. It was kind of the hottest thing going on. And there were never appointments. Like as soon as you got the invitation, you had to make the appointment because you, there wouldn't be any appointments. So one day I was sitting there and I said, gosh, you know, there's really, it seems like there's a need for this and it's, they're really not that good. Like, I mean, I'll never, I won't say names, but you know, they were okay. And I just thought, well, how hard could it be? You know, you don't have to have a color line. You don't have to have all of this. Like you just plug in some blow dryers, like, mm, okay, let's, let's do it. You know? And so I did, I just looked for a location and I opened it and I knew I could do hair in the, you know, I, I obviously worked behind the chair a little, but I, I hadn't, I had, you know, I, um, just coincidentally, I had read a book. I read uh, Business Plans for Dummies and I read um, 
the e-myth. And in that book, it was really a lot about how you can't grow your business if you're working in your business. So really, I, I, I don't know, I guess that just stuck with me and I made it a point to really not be the person that was actually delivering the services so that I could be the one to grow it. And um, yeah, I opened my first, my first location with a friend, a partner. Um, I was nervous about having the time with younger children and, and being able to share that workload with her. And um, she also was looking for, you know, something to do at that stage in her life. And unfortunately, it didn't work out. Um, we split ways about two years in, um, right, right before opening our second location. But um, yeah, so that's, you know, kind of how I just jumped into it. And I figured it out as it, as we went along. And yeah, we're here, like uh, just celebrated 10 years. So. Wow. Well, congratulations on 10 years. That's definitely a feat. And also to do that with young kids is incredible. To take the e-myth and apply it immediately is also inspiring because that is a lesson people sometimes don't even learn or apply what they've learned for years and years. So there's so much there. Yeah. What, what brought you to just, you know what, I want to keep going and opening up more and more. Tell us about your franchise vision. I think I was really inspired by Ali Webb, the the founder of Dry Bar. I just, I connected with her a lot on levels. Like she was from California. She started this business so out of the box. Like it was something so fresh and new and innovative. Um, she started it in a car or in a van, you know, like driving around and then opened her first brick and mortar and just really took off. I loved her marketing. Um, I, I think I tend to have a natural knack for like what's like trending or what that marketing piece like what looks you know aesthetically pleasing or sounds good so I don't know I just really had a, a, a like a I don't know I just really looked up to her and I think from the very beginning I just had a vision that this was not going to be a one-off location that I really wanted it to grow into something big like if she could do it why couldn't I like I was from California I could do it too you know and and that was one of the things I think that was a thorn in, in my partner you know we just had a very different vision which is a podcast in itself partnerships and getting into those and like you know what's important when you when you start out that partnership and and I think having that same vision is is really a big a big part of it you know like we just did not have the same vision and that's okay you know but well, opening multiple locations is not easy and you've gone through even some just personal challenges and you faced certain things. What has helped you um, during just a tumultuous season of, of working to grow? What has yeah. really gotten you through that? What have you been through and, and what's helped you get to the other side? I mean, I think, you know, opening, I, uh, I opened four locations very quickly. I would say I had them all open within the first about four years. And um, I added the full service piece into my brand, um, partly out of the partnership dissolution strategy, but um, just seeing, you know, where I wanted, I, I saw my mission or my vision change a little bit and what I wanted for my team and for our guests. And so bringing that piece on and, and just figuring out how to make it all work um, with me not being behind the chair, but also being only one person for four locations, you know, not being spread so thin and the challenges uh, that that presents, you know, when you when you have multiple locations and a, and a fairly large team. Um, so that took a while to really uh, ground, you know, and, and get working smoothly. And I did that without coaching. Uh, I, I was part of a coaching company in the early on, but it really didn't pertain to my business. I, I found it hard to fit their ideas and their principles and make it really fit with my concept, which was quite different than, than the traditional full service salon. So um, then I did stumble upon Jason in Vegas at a Redkin symposium. And I was like, wow, I loved his message of like, we're not going to tell you, we aren't going to give you a big, a, a lot of cookie cutter spreadsheets, you know, you're going to create your own. And I was like, yes, that's what I need. So once I joined HPSA, I really um, was able to dial in my systems, hone them in, create them that work for my company. 
and, um, and really become the CEO of my company and being able to empower people to be able to let people step up into roles that maybe they didn't think they wanted to do when they first went to school, you know, so it's been a really great journey and, and learning experience for me and, and learning how to, to run multiple locations. It's been a, a trial for sure. Um, you know, we had, I had the four locations and then we had the pandemic. I've had a small, I wouldn't call it a walkout, but I had a good, a number of key people leave right after the, the pandemic and open their own salon. So I had to get through that. Um, and, you know, just all the things that come along with it. My children have, you know, pretty much grown and left their, they're working on their own careers now. Um, I unfortunately went through a, a divorce during this time. And then just recently, uh, last year, I also was diagnosed with breast cancer and, and fought that last year. So, and then this year brought a new set of troubles and trials. But I think that, you know, just having that tenacity and just being able to like, I'm not giving up, you know, like I tell my kids, like you only fail if you quit. So just keep one foot in front of the other. And I, and I think that's how I've been able to grow through, through all of the ups and downs <laughs> for sure. Well, I'm just so sorry with the news that you received with the, the health, um, uh, just season of going through that. I I've never been through that, but I've had my mom and my sister, like I see, I've seen it. It's not easy for you to do all that you've done in the midst of that. And really having, there is no choice at that point to prioritize your own health and well being. still travel and are a flight attendant. Okay. So everybody needs to know that. Yes, I still am a flight attendant and I'm a mentor now. <laughs> yes. And an HPSA mentor. It's just, so most people are listening like, there's no way, how could you do it all? And I feel like what I'm hearing over and over again is that your mentality is why not me? Why not now? Yeah, and for sure. So I'm just really inspired to hear that. Um, Leah, and I think so many people just need to believe in themselves and be willing to keep going. So thank you for your willingness yeah. to share that. I'm very fortunate that, you know, my diagnosis was the best of the worst, I guess, if there's such a thing. Um, it was caught really early. I, you know, was able to treat through surgeries and, you know, I'm on the other side, I'm doing great. I'm healthy and fine. But, you know, I also, I think throughout my life, try to find, you know, make lemonade out of lemons or, you know, try the try to find the bright spots or the lessons. And, and it really shifted my mission for my guests and, and my, not so much, I guess maybe my team too, but just it really, it really helped me to focus in on what I really want um, my company to represent and to portray going forward. I also, in this time, um, right around when I was diagnosed, I guess I had made the decision to go ahead and, and start a franchise company. And um, so that took some time and, and effort um, to get going. It's quite a large project. So I'm excited to announce that'll be officially launched um, any day. So we are ready to go and I'm super excited. And, and it was good timing if there's such a thing, because like I said, it was just able to me really define my brand and how it sets us apart from the other salons or the other concepts similar to mine um, that are available for, for purchase. And so I feel like, you know, all the things that I've done, being able to multitask to the max, <laughs> um, and be able to be the head of my company and the CEO of my company, um, and then become a mentor and be able to, to lead other salon owners through their trials and tribulations right alongside me, mine haven't ended for sure, um, has led me to be able to be in that place like, yes, I want to be able to offer these, these opportunities to other people, because this is such an incredible industry, as well as my team and let them have that opportunity like, hey, I can own one of these two someday. So I think it just really opens up um, opportunity for people in all areas, you know, in our industry and, and out. It's such a great industry. I really love it. I feel the same way. And taking on a franchise project is massive because you're 
selling to guests, you're selling to team members, you're selling to business owners to take on your vision and believe in it and trust that. And so you really have multiple buyers that you are serving and, you know, it's coming in good timing with your experience being a mentor and also speaks to your number one passion, which is your team members, whether they are a part of your locations or future franchise locations, you have really honed in on creating this career path where people don't feel this need to like, oh, I've gotten as far as I can here. And now I can go off and do my own thing. Tell us a bit about why this is something that you are so passionate about. As I grew and I started with my one location, I wasn't really as dialed into, um, you know, where was my team going to go? You know, they go, they spend this time and effort and energy and money to get their license. And are they going to want to stay in a blow dry bar situation forever, you know, and not, and not doing cuts and color. And what does that look like for them? And for me as an owner, like, you know, am I, am I giving them an opportunity to grow how far and, and what does it do for my business when we have a constant turnover. It's not great for the guests. It's not great for me. And, and frankly, it's not great for them. So I think, you know, other low dry concepts, I think they know that they're a stepping stone for people that are building in their full service careers. And that's fine too. Um, but I thought, you know, why, why am I, you know, I found that our guests were saying, well, hey, where can I get my hair cut? You know, who do you recommend? And I was like, yeah, there's incredible salons, but why am I building their, their clientele when I could be keeping it in our brand and, and offering opportunities for, for my team? So that's how the full service came about, um, really more as a career path, a stepping stone for those that did want to leave the styling side and go on to cuts and color. But I'll tell you, I have a lot that really just, in, they enjoy styling and they love that that's a place where they can thrive and grow. And there's lots of opportunities there. A lot of my team also go to college and they want to go into business and management, marketing. So I'm able, because I've grown to this size, I'm able to offer those positions mm -hmm. to my team. Like, hey, you can grow into this too. You know, there's, there's opportunities here all the way around. And then I think adding this, this last piece, this franchise piece really is huge for them. Like on the, on the blow dry side, it's like, Hey, you have this opportunity that you can own your own. You can move to another state if you want and still stay within our mission, our brand, my coaching, my, our beliefs, our core values and, and not compromise that or, or have that added stress of starting from scratch. You know, you, you get our systems and everything. So I think it's an exciting piece. Brilliant. I hope that it, it plays out. My vision is, you know, plays out, but, um, that was my thinking truly. Yeah. It's brilliant. You know, and kind of what I'm hearing is it is imperative for you to grow. It's imperative that you create the hottest business model ever yeah. so that people want to stay and be a part of that. It is, it's like being a part of Nike or being a part of Lululemon. You got your brands, they're your thing that's you identify with them and you're creating that. I think it's brilliant. And yeah. I love how you brought up that as you've grown, you have more opportunities for more people. And like you said, with the, Hey, you can take this anywhere and you can take without losing all the things that you've become accustomed to. So I think yeah. it's brilliant. Um, Anything yeah, else about like your full service salon as far as like, hey, when you sit down with a new hire and you say, this is our career path, this is this is a path for you. What does that typically look like that they're most excited about? I'm most excited with how many opportunities there are within the company. Um, you know, they can go to the full service. They can stay in the blow dry bar and be fully a functioning career. We have lots of career paths, even in the blow dry bar. Um, they can do makeup. They can do hot. Uh, we call them hot to trots, but like where we go out to other people's, you know, do weddings or whatever their houses. They can be in management. They can be in social media marketing. They can do, you know, there's just a lot of of different paths. And I think it. They're always like, wow, that's available here. And I think you know, it takes a lot of pressure off of them. I think you know, in social media these days, there's a lot about 
oh, the sweet life and it's easy and, you know, and they go to school and they're teaching them like, just go out on your own, but they don't have the skills yet. And, and they, they, they get out there. I feel I've, I've seen it happen and I feel bad because I know how hard it is to start a business and what you, what you need in order to make that work. And I'm not, not even working behind the chair, you know, and it's like to work behind the chair, to try to build your business or you leave a salon and you think I'm going to go make all this money and you lose 30%. Uh, industry averages 30% of your guests stay with the salon you're in. So you're having to build again on top of incurring a lot more expense than you probably thought. Um, you know, let's face it, a lot of owners aren't real super transparent with the costs and what it costs and how, what it takes to run a, a successful salon. Most salons are not profitable in the United States. They don't know those statistics before they move. And then they get in there and whatever they're spending, forget whatever they're spending extra in money, they're spending in time. Now they're losing their free time at home because they're booking all their clients. And I think that they don't realize that. And then they get out there and they feel like, well, I made this big move. It's not really working out. Like, how do I come back? And so I think taking that pressure off of, of them and just letting them know like, hey, this is a career path that, you know, there's opportunity here wherever you want to go. And I'm open to it. Um, I'll coach you along the way. And as long as, you know, you, you've you got, you know, your, you may, remain interested in our business and our coach, I mean, our uh, mission, you know, I'll, I'll help you along the way. And if you want to go another way, that's okay too. I'll even help you do that. But, <laughs> but I think it takes a lot of pressure off. At least I hope so. From a leadership's perspective, it sounds like you really focus on really coaching and mentoring. Who are kind of the main people that you're sewing into on a regular basis that go out then and sew into the others that are a part of your brand? Yeah, I mean, it's always something that we're honing in on and, and I'm always readjusting my my systems and processes. I'm in the process of that now. I, this year, I've had quite enough people with a new location opening late. and We had some some um, maintenance problems going on in a couple locations. So this year has been really tough and I'm finding myself actually right now, just like, Hey, we gotta, we gotta tear everything down and rebuild it up. So it's an ongoing process for sure. But I really try to keep our structure pretty clean. As far as I stay at the CEO level, then I'm coaching my general manager. She's coaching our directors at that level. And then they're pouring into the team um, on the staff level. I find it really helps to create that trust and that line of, of empowering my, my manager so that they have that power. If I'm not, I'm not stepping in all the time, like overstepping or, or letting, letting people know like, oh, well, if I just go to Leah, I'll get my way, you know? And that's hard to do because I love them all on every level and I just want them all to have what they want. But I like, you know, I gotta, I gotta take a step back and focus on really my, my job is growth and, um, and mentoring my mentors. So, you know, coaching them up, making sure that they have what they need and the tools that they need to coach at the level that they're the people that they're coaching. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, yeah it's great. Long winded. I know you're a woman who's always getting after it. So I'm curious, what are your top two objectives yet this fourth quarter? Oh, this fourth quarter. Wow. Um, like I said, we this this year has been a real struggle for uh, for me and for my company. Um, like financial. <laughs> Financially, yes. I mean, we've managed. I'm super proud of my team. We at one point we only had one salon open. We had 35 employees working with 10 chairs available. <laughs> it was crazy, and we rented some chairs from a local salon. And um, we managed. We've managed to actually grow in spite of all of that. I'm super proud of them, and the flexibility was just incredible. But like I said, it, it did a lot of like you know. It's like, it was like a hurricane going through. It's like, wow, you know, and, and I, I think it's a good opportunity for us to look at some systems and some processes and kind of redo them. So I think going into the fourth quarter, I want to finish strong. 
I want to really let my team, we have a beautiful new location open, which is my franchise model and everyone's excited about it. My, the, the community's really excited. So just really finishing strong, um, you know, continuing on the path that we're on, just kind of starting from a new place and seeing, you know, with, with the help of my team, how we can even improve on what we had at the beginning of the year. So I'm super hopeful because yeah, like I said, we, we somehow maintain, managed to grow a little bit. So that's oh, exciting. Hey, congrats on that. Especially with having three of your locations, not open and available. That's huge. Scary. Um, <laughs> it was so. like, how are we doing this? <laughs> and I know everybody listening is like, I want to see, I want to check out the salon and I'm like, trust me, all the links are in our show notes to check out their website. We have their Instagram all in the links in our show notes. So please go and follow them, watch what they're doing. And if you, not to have like a plug for you, but I'm like, if you want to have a franchise, you need to get a hold of Leah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Leah, before we I know I'm like always thinking this way, right? What's our call to action for everybody? But yeah, tell me um, if you have any kind of final words of wisdom for owners listening today that are like, man, I needed to hear that it's really worth take, having the guts to take big leaps, even in the midst of what might feel like some major roadblocks in my life, what would you want to say to them? I would say like, I think fear is what really holds us all back from our true potential, right? And if you can just wrap your brain around like, yeah, it's scary. Yeah, you might fail. You might, I don't even know if you'll fail. Cause I, like I say to my kids, like you never fail unless you quit. So as long as you just keep going, you're going to find your way around it and you're going to find the answer somehow, some way you will get, even in the impossible, you, there will be an answer and, or what seems impossible. And just to like, I don't know, just go for it. Like maybe don't, don't think so much. I think we overthink so many things in our lives. I know when I overthink, I wind up usually not doing the, the best thing that my gut, like trust your gut. You know, if you have this idea and you believe in it, do it. What's the worst that can happen? You know, people close businesses all the time. That doesn't make you a failure. It just, it's the next rung in the ladder. You know, that's how I look at it. It's just, I climbed up three rungs this year and last year, five, and you know, the, five years ago it was 10. So I'm just going to keep going. You know, what else, what else can you do? I think just don't quit. Don't ever quit. Trust your gut and take a leap. Don't be so afraid of things. Very, that's, that's very inspiring. Advice. Yes. Thank you, Leah. I really appreciate you being here with me today. This was awesome. Yes. Thank you for inviting me. I was so honored. I was like, oh, what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just loving you and everything you do. Maya's been really great for my company. We're excited about that. I'm excited to report we're at like 70% right now. So that's exciting. And um, yeah, I'm just so grateful to you and, and all of your genius ideas. So uh -huh. first, us women, man, we can really, uh, we can really do a lot. We're very powerful for sure. <laughs> I'm not going to disagree with you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, and thank you all for joining us here week after week at Beyond the Technique. If you appreciate this podcast, we would love it if you could take a moment to leave us a review wherever you're listening so that more people like yourself will discover Beyond the Technique where we're here to change the way that you are supported in your business. Until next time, everybody, have an awesome day and stay strong.